Hey guys, Iowa Crypto Mining here, and today I, I have a spreadsheet that I have made that shows many different aspects of Bitcoin ASICs and kind of buying options and things you need to keep in mind when you're purchasing an ASIC to look long term. Now, in this spreadsheet, I have Bitcoin ASICs here, but you can actually copy it and use it for other coins, um, for you know Litecoin miners, L7s, and then like the X5 and and the other. Litecoin miners. You could do it for Cadena. You could do it for any other coin. The same principles uh, go into this. And so we're going to talk about different options, uh, different things that the market could play out uh, for better, for worse. Um, and to kind of keep in mind to know, you know, if something happens, is that ASIC still going to be profitable? Is it still going to be a good buy? Is it still going to be something that, you know, you have no control over how the market is? Do you still want to buy a a two thousand, three thousand, four thousand dollar ASIC. So this is just going to give us options. We're going to talk kind of through it and how how it works, and then we look at different scenarios to where okay, if this happens, you know this these ASICs these ASICs are good. These are ASICs are bad, and then kind of what the what we're kind of seeing from you know the different wattages, uh, the how efficient they are, and then just the upfront cost. Um, is it worth to buy the more expensive? Uh, Bitmain S19 XPs or the M50s that just came out for what's minor or like the Pro Plus, uh, the S19 Pro Plus. So let's kind of look at this. So first off, um, I have all the numbers as of today and I have my electrical costs that I use for my ASICs. Um, yes, it's I'm at four cents. I am very lucky with where I live and, and what I get. Um, if you change this number, uh, it'll change all the numbers for you. So you can set this to where you want it to be. Um, and kind of go from there. So we're gonna. So this is as of today. So as of today, you know, I'm looking at what my profit is, and then here's the ROI. So when is the purchase price that I can buy it today? You know, with the power cost being paid every day out of the Bitcoin I mine, when is it gonna pay itself off? So these S19s, the 96, the 100, and the 104, they're all about the same. They're all within a week of each other, and even like the S19 uh, Pro Plus. Is, it's in there too. So these more, a little more dated, but cheaper upfront ASICs are, are well, are, are ROI faster. So the idea is if you have an ASIC for three years, you want the ROI quickly, you know, within a year and a half is what I hear. Some of the big boys, they kind of, they kind of shoot for that 18 month mark. And then after that, they know it's going to go another 18 months before they have to get rid of it, before it's it's not profitable, not making money at all. So the faster this pays off, obviously the better. And so as you can see, like the XP in today's market, it's gonna take, what is this, two and a half years? Two and a, two and a quarter before it pays itself off. And that's, you're not gonna have much time to actually profit from it. You're gonna profit a lot afterwards, but it's gonna take you a long time to get to that point um, where, you know, these other S19s, the, 100, the 96, 100, 100, and 104, you know, we're looking at quickly paying itself off. So um, that's something to keep in mind. And even that M, uh, that 102 terahash, the M30S++ I got, you know, that's going to pay itself off in 418 days, which is the, in line with these other S19. So that's, you know, depending on the price, that's also a good buy. So that's in the current market. And then let's let's raise the Bitcoin cost. Let's, let's raise the Bitcoin price. Everything else stays the same. Yes, it's not going to be that way, but let's say everything else stays the same. What do we look at if Bitcoin goes to 30,000? You know, these numbers come down actually quite a bit if everything else, everything else stays the same. Um, you know, it comes down. So there's the old one. Here's a new We come down 65 days just by raising the Bitcoin price to 30,000. So not a big jump if everything else stays the same. And actually, to be honest, today, when I pulled these numbers at 7.30 on uh, Tuesday night, this is actually way lower than it has been. It's actually it was up about 288 uh, on rewards because the difficulty has gone up, the hash rate gone up because we've had a good couple of weeks of Bitcoin mining. So this is actually lower than what it has been. So even with that, I'm paying these off in a year, slightly less, all the lower priced ASICs. Um, not the big boy, the XPs are still way up there, but the the other lower costs, all kind of in that low 2000, under 2000 price range, they're paying them off in a year. So that means you get a year and a half, two years of profit, you know, that you're not, that, you know, you're not paying off the machine. That's pretty good. So let's raise this to 45. 
So 45,000, yeah, you're getting close to almost half a year. Okay, and even then, the XPs look really good then at that point. Then they are talking about a year. So as Bitcoin goes up, these heavy duty, higher hash rate miners become better and better. Because even then, these other ones are only a couple of weeks behind. Um, and so that's, that's looking pretty good. So then, um, yeah, if we go to 60, you know, we're talking, you know, four and a half, five months for most of these to pay himself off. Now the ROI, what I have here is it's kind of built in difficulty. Um, so what, what that means is, is if these other numbers stay the same and the difficulty goes up 10% or 10% more miners get turned on, uh, this is, this is the difference. So instead of 137 days and everything goes up 10%, um, in the difficulty and the amount of hash rate on there, you're, you're looking at, you know, uh, 19 more days. And so I have this for, for 10%, 25% and 50%. So when you kind of messing around with this, keep an eye on the 10% and 25 and 50 for worst case scenarios. So if we go back to where we were today, or at, as the time of doing this, you can see there's a huge jump in what 10, 25, and then, you know, half of what today is, you know, it, it, if half, if 50% more miners come on more online, it's, you're not paying this thing off ever. Even honestly at 25% more, if, every, if the price stays the same and the amount of rewards stays the same, you're, you're, you're coming behind. You're going to, you're going to be way behind. So that's something to kind of keep in mind. I also, here's like the Bitcoin difficulty chart. Um, so here's the last three years. So it's kind of good to kind of gauge where we're at. So if we keep in mind what Bitcoin was doing here, uh, on May, it was already starting to come down. Um, no, actually, you know what? I lied. This is the China uh, ban. So this is when the China ban happened. So all that came down. But Bitcoin actually spiked here in September, October. This is when Bitcoin price was at the highest. But the difficulty wasn't much higher than it was a year ahead of time. Um, but since then, you could, Bitcoin prices come down, but the difficulty is, has pretty much gone straight up. And so now since these last couple of months where we had, you know, 25K plus Bitcoin, you've seen it's a big jump in hash rate. And what, what a lot of people are thinking is during these bad times, a lot of people shut down. This should have been a straight line going up here. And it wasn't because the people that weren't as profitable, I had higher t uh, electrical costs had shut down the big, the big farms. And so now that Bitcoin came up in price, they turned themselves back on. So this should have been a straight line. So that's what people are thinking. So we, yes, it's been a big jump here recently, but it's because all these miners had already just turned back on. It wasn't like there was new miners that came on all of a sudden or anything like that. It was just the straight line didn't continue. So that's kind of, you know, keep in mind, you know, in this time frame, if we're at 13, 14 right here, right now we're at 46 for difficulty. So it's, it's a little over three times uh, the amount of hash rate has come online. Um, so it's three times less uh, profits. So that's something to keep in mind and then use the spreadsheet to kind of figure out where I should be. Um, and what I've been seeing is that these, these other, these cheaper Bitcoin miners, even though the price has gone up, you're still paying yourself off a lot faster. And so there's a lot more profitability Yes, Bitcoin's higher, and you're not making as much as these big, big miners. But if if Bitcoin takes a while to get back up to that higher price, you know, if it only goes up to 40 at the end of 2024, you know, let's say, you know, not a bad situation, but not a good situation, um, you're pay, you're you're in profit quickly before the end of 2024. So that's what I'm kind of thinking uh, as a safe bet of these cheaper ones. And so, you know, if the difference. So that's kind of what the price goes up and the difficulty goes up. These up, these numbers are, um, if as electrical costs change, let's say for, as of today, your electrical cost goes up to eight cents. So it doubles. You're not, yes, you're profitable as of today and all these miners, but if the difficulty goes up just a little bit, you're, you're now negative. Okay. So you, if at, at eight, at eight cents, you need this to go up to like 40,000. Then we're back to a year. Okay. Even at the eight cents, you're, you're paying this off in a year if Bitcoin goes up. And if these award, rewards go up a little bit, like they were beginning of the week, you're even higher. So you kind of play with this, kind of run different scenarios, what it could be. Um, 
here is best case scenario. You know, it's here's best case scenario. If we hit that magical hundred thousand, yeah, even at hundred terahash, even at half of the rewards, you're still make you're making ten bucks a day. That's best case scenario. So, um, yeah, run run different scenarios. You know, change these numbers to fix what works for you, and, and see if it's if it fits you. This is not me telling you what to buy. It's not me telling you what uh, you should do or shouldn't do. This is me just giving you information the way I think about it, the way I go about the, you know, what's happening and what what do I see and what do I what do I want to plan for, and then kind of make a decision that's best for me. And so everyone's situation is different. So keep that in mind, but I'll have this shared down below in the description. Download it, save a copy, add in whatever you want. You can add in low power modes below and have and run, you know, run numbers for those and kind of see what works best for you and what you want to do. Uh, change these costs for whatever company you like to buy with, or if you see a price that's really good, you want to see how much it changes, uh, you know, enter that in and you can just drag these down and add more columns. But yeah, that's what I got. Thank you very much for sitting here with me, talking through this. You guys have a good day.